what we have here, I always like to include what I call the uh, user information that identifies what all of the lines are for. Right here, this particular one shows that we have a square etched line in there. So if we were trying to fit inside a square block, those might be what you would want to use um, as an aid in your centering. There is also the diagonals and vertical and horizontal and things like that. So all of these different uh, bits of information is just to help you. Here is a sample of how you could use all four templates and stitch them together. They actually work together like that and this kind of looks like ram's horns. But once you get to the center, then you can change templates to another size and go back out and change to another and go back in and still end up back at center. And then to create a wave motion, uh, you can just do that in continuous row. So they're real easy. All four of them work the very same way. They're just different sizes. So I don't have anyone monitoring my questions here. So I'm going to just real quickly take a quick scan and see if there's anything I need to address. Don't go away. So I do have one question on here from Linda and says, on the coils, do you have to stick to one side uh, or the other? No, um, we're going to take a look at that in just a few minutes. So let me just grab a piece here. This isn't a very big piece of fabric, but I just want to show you some basics of the template to start with. This is the four and a half inch size. And like I said, they're all the same with the exception. Let's take a look at the six inch in comparison. You can tell here that our center area right in here on the six inch, this part is a little bit wider, okay, than what we have on the four and a half inch. It's pretty skinny right there. So the way the template works, you can start anywhere in here you want. You can stitch part of it. You don't even have to stitch the whole thing. You can do any part you want. There are several different alignment lines uh, that actually if you put an eight point crosshair marker on here, that is where the lines are. But you can start and stop anywhere you want to in there. Just keep track of what you're doing. You might want to use one of the little um, ruler sticker arrows if you're going to do a particular pattern and only do a portion of the template, uh, just as a reminder of where you are. But that gives you a little bit of consistency so that you can get to where you want to be. There is some flex in the template. I have several pieces of stable tape on here because I move my hands around as I'm using it. If I just held it like I might with some of the other templates, as I'm working here, it's possible that you could push and move that inner area. And I don't want to do that, but it's fairly thin pieces of acrylic in there. So this was a uh, template here was a little bit challenging to be able to make it work where we can have the same size of our coiling spiral as we stitch. But you just have to be aware that there is a little flex in the template. And so by holding it with your hands, you're going to keep it real stable 
and then move your fingers around. But more stable tape around the outside um, is helpful. And that's why I said I will provide you with some stable tape for a short period of time. It's not automatically included, but if you give me a note in the special instructions that you need stable tape, then I will include it. So let's move this over and take a look. This now is the six inch. It is the biggest one and it will also flex some if you push on that. It's acrylic. You know, it can move. If we bend these things or sit on them or stand on them or drop them, they can break. But having our stable tape around the outside and that'll help grab onto the fabric and then we can just kind of hold this part together as we move around. It wouldn't hurt to wear a pair of gloves while you're doing this because it's going to let you hang on to everything a little bit easier. So if you're absolutely anti-gloves, you don't have to do it. But if you do use gloves, clothing gloves, when you're doing your work, that really will make it easier because you just have more of things that's gripping your fabric and your template. So these are really quite easy to use, um, almost to the point where it's kind of silly to have to even show you. It isn't because you need to know what you're doing, but the way they work, it's so simple in uh, design. It's kind of like the winding ways. Your foot can't go anywhere but in the path. So here we are. I'm going to start on the outside at B. We could start on the inside, but I'm going to start on the outside. Let's hang on to that thread so we don't make a big mess underneath. Definitely don't want to have to clean that up. Let's see if maybe we can adjust that camera just a little bit here. Maybe even bring it down a little lower. So just bear with me for just a second here. We'll get you situated. Now, I think you might have a little bit better uh, line of sight on it. So. We can start here in the corner and come over to this point and it can create a little bit of a, a connecting tail. Just keep that in mind. We're not going to do that right now. Just know that that's where it would be. A few little starting stitches. But you can see here how the foot is the same width of what the opening in the template is. So it really is a matter of hold it in position and travel through that stitch path. So I don't go a long ways before I move. Just because it's easier not to. So you want to just be careful not to let that part lift up and get underneath it. It's not scary and I don't want to alarm you uh, thinking that it is just because I said that I just don't want to not give you all of the information. But you can see here, I'm not moving the template. I'll keep at least one hand on it all the time and move my fingers around and have a few inches to go at a time. So 
so we can keep on traveling right through that stitch path. Better move my fingers. Now here, if you're not careful, like I showed you that flex in the template, you could push it to the side, but believe it or not, these are very forgiving, and if you got off track a little bit, it's not really going to show. So here we are in the center. There's a couple of different things we can do here. One of them is to backtrack back out, which is really kind of cool. Um, it gives you a little bit more boldness in your um, pattern. But what I'm going to do, notice here, <laughs> let's turn around. Here is the label on the, the template. I'm going to just rotate it in place. And I didn't put any markings on here, so that was probably dumb on my part. Because now, I don't know where my center is necessarily. Maybe we better do that. But we can actually just rotate the template in place and stitch right back out. And that creates an interesting little pattern. Let me put some marks in there just so I know where to line up. And I spin the template in place. I probably wouldn't do this on every one of my patterns um, in my design, but you certainly can. And then here's my marked lines that I would align with. So there's lots of different ways here. Could come on around and line up again. You could go at an angle. It's really kind of interesting. All of this would then just overlay and create some interesting uh, little centers in other areas. Let's try it right here on the diagonal. So I'm still in the center. out of there just a little bit. You will overstitch your previous uh, quilting. One thing about it, your foot is not going to wobble back and forth in the stitch path. You will go just where the path is and so if you don't push the edges of uh, the template, it's going to stay right on track. So you wouldn't have to do this kind of um, backtracking just a different kind, you could stitch right on top of where you did the first time coming out. But I just wanted to show you a variation of doing that. Some of it will be right on top of our previous stitches. So we actually made just a slight variation in our turn. Let's cut that thread and remove it. And so this is really, here's where we started um, with our first set of stitching. And then when we rotated the template, here's where we ended up. But in the center part right here is where we were at center turned the template and worked our way back out. So it's just a different way that we could do our spirals. On my little daisy background area, I just did straight uh, coils. 
without any uh, backing back out or anything like that. And some of it you can see here. I even stitched over the top of some others in there. So there's really not anything you can do that would be wrong. Um, it's just whatever makes it work easily for you. So I do have a little sheet here and I will post this. I could not do it. I was having too much trouble um, just getting logged on for the live. But I do have a little bit of an uh, information sheet. It's just some optional designs for the coils that I will post that um, as a PDF that you can download and um, take a look at. It just shows placement. So here is the wave motion and how you would come up here and around and then here you would backtrack back out and do your next um, pattern over there. And here are the ways that you would lay out your templates in order to do that. So I will make that available to you. I will post it on the Sew Steady um, area later today as soon as we get out of here and I'm able to get it on there for you. So I will be going through the questions and if there's anything that we need to look at or answer, I will do that for you. So someone is asking what type of a sewing machine, I guess she means Norma, the brand. The machine I'm working on today is a Bernina machine, um, and I have the Bernina foot for that. I do, and I have a Wesley foot for it, and I have used that, um, but today I have that Bernina foot on there, number 72. So Sandy says that she has cut her stable tape to fit the coil area. And so Sandy, I'm assuming what you mean is inside these little parts. Um, you know, you could do that if you want to. If that helps to do it that way, then by all means do it that way. But I found by putting so I have one inch pieces out here and three quarter inch pieces on the side and then just move my fingers around. And so whatever works for you is what I want you to do. And Michelle is asking, where can you buy these in Australia? Uh, Punch with Judy should have them. I don't know if she has them available yet. Um, can get them for sure and um, some of the others down there also. So anyone that carries any of the Sew Steady products has access to all of these. So Jenny is asking how many sizes are there in the coils? So I will once again, there's a four and a half inch, five inch, five and a half, and a six inch. And Sue is asking, could you just move the template um, with a needle down, yes, you can do that and just to continue on um, if you wanted to where would stitch in here and stop 
and then just uncoil the template from around the foot. I will uh, go ahead and not make everyone sit here and wait while I look through the comments, but once we close and get out of here, I will do that and answer any questions that maybe we haven't addressed at this time. So I hope that this has helped you and uh, understanding how the coils and the wiggles work. I have done just very little uh, demoing of both of these two different sets. And so today, wanted to just spend a little more uh, time and focus on that. Like I said, I will make this page available. It's just a one sheet thing. It, um, is a little bit more than what's with the templates, but it's um, how to lay them out. And if you have stable tape on both sides, then you can flip them and do other things. So that's it for me. I will go through the questions and the comments and respond to all of those that I can. And this is Donna McCauley in the Dam Quilting Studio, signing off for now. Bye-bye.